Hi, this is Sonia, and today I would like to teach you how to import a PDF pattern to Silhouette Studio. This is in conjunction with my friend Kelly, Sewing with Kelly. She is doing the tutorial on the Cricut, and I will be doing I'm Design Space software, and I will be doing the tutorial in Silhouette Studio. I have a Cameo, so that's what I use as my cutting machine. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Today we are doing the Blue Cala Clematis, and I'd like to thank Celine for her permission for us to be able to do this tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the Clematis pattern, and I have it saved to my desktop. And this is going to import the PDF. I like to import the last page first, so it's just personal preference. Um, we're only going to, if you go over here, these are, this is the whole entire pattern. Uh, we're only going to import the pattern pieces. And so I'm going to import as vector. I will make a quick note here. I do have the business edition of Silhouette Studio. And if you have the regular edition, there might be a few differences. Um, but today my tutorial is going to be using the business edition. And if you don't have the business edition, it's definitely worth the upgrade. Even if you don't have a business, just the different features that Silhouette Studio offers in the business edition is fantastic. So I'm going to import this as a vector, not as an image, um, just because you do have to do go through a few more steps if you import as an image. And then I'm going to keep this grouped for now. I can always ungroup it later and I'm going to click on import. So that's just going to load the slip pocket. It's going to take just a minute here. And I'm going to move this over to the side. It's how I prefer working on it. So as you can see, this whole thing moves. So I'm going to have to ungroup it first. And there are a few things that we can get rid of. We can get rid of this one inch square. And we can also get rid of all of these words here. Now, because I've ungrouped it and because of the way that the design came through, you're going to see different aspects like this is completely separate. So I'm going to undo that so that it snaps back into place. And what I need to do is I'm going to make this a compound path. That way it's going to be together. I'll move this all the way over. Now, um, one thing that I would like to point out is that you need to go ahead and increase the size so that you can see everything that you're working with here because there are some paths and nodes that you may need to change. I don't know if you can see it, but let me move up just a little bit closer here. See where these, this node is here? I'm going to make my line just a little bit thinner so you can see that. There we go. That's better. You can see how this is not straight. So I want this to be as straight as possible. So we are going to have to edit this node or this path. So you can see this line here and you can move it just a tad. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. So you can move these around here. I'm going to, I just want to show you this. You don't want to move it this much, but I just want to show you how you can edit that. So that's going to snap that back. So you're not going to be able to get it exactly right, um, but good enough to where your machine is going to cut the line straight because you don't want your fabric to be, and you can see on the top here how this is poking out just a little bit. And the machine is so precise, you can't see it when it's not zoomed in, but the machine is so precise that it will absolutely make that little lump. And you don't want that. You want your fabric to look really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit that a little bit. And 
it still needs to be edited just a little bit. So just double click on that. And then you're going to move, move it to where it connects just a little bit better. All right, so this is the slip pocket. I'm going to close that out, get that back, and make my line a little bit thicker here so we can see this better. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip this. So you can see that my space here comes up as eight and a half by 11 and that fits okay. But my cutting mat is 12 by 12. And so I'm just gonna change that over to 12 by 12 just to have some more working room here. So this is the slip pocket and we need to cut two of the lining fabrics. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate one more so that I have that in file here. Okay, so I have my two slip pockets. I'm going to save this. I will show you at the very end how to save as um, the whole pattern in your library. I'm going to go ahead and do a save as, save to hard drive for now. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And now with the business edition, you can save this as um, SVG, uh, PNG file, JPEG. Um, you can even save it as a PDF. I'm going to go ahead and save it as an SVG. And I use Chrome, so that's what it's going to open up as next time I open it. So there we have the pocket on my desktop. Okay, so now we're going to open up another pattern piece. We're going to go back to our Clematis pattern. And I've already input this last page, so I'm going to go to page 13 here. And this is going to be the lining. And we're going to keep all these settings the same and import. And with the lining, we are going to go ahead and we have to weld this because we want our cutter to cut on. Uh, we don't want it to cut on the fold, obviously. So we're going to weld the two pieces together. And we're also going to go ahead and take out the pleats um, just to keep in line. Kelly and I decided that's what how we're going to do that. So we're going to ungroup this and again we're going to get rid of these different elements that we don't need here. Okay and so while I have these ungrouped I'll put them over here on the white so you can see it a little bit better. You can click on these and delete. Now on this one, this whole piece is together. So we do need to take our knife tool and detach it from that. So I'm going to go over, over here and take our knife tool. And I like to hold down the shift even though it's a straight line, sometimes it doesn't go exactly where I want it to go. So if I hold down the shift, it will take it off exactly where I want it. So then it, you can see that it's separated, that knife tool separated. You do need to do a little bit of cleanup, so I just press delete. Now I'm going to zoom in so I can really see this here. So I'm going to take my eraser tool on this this one and I'm just going to go ahead and erase it. I don't need my eraser to be that big, so I'm going to make it smaller. And this is what I'm saying about the business edition. The tools are so handy on this. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase this, being precise. You don't want to erase any of the size of the pattern, but you do want to 
make it so that you're not having any lumps or bumps. And so what I did is I need to extend this over because we're, we don't want any breaks, but we want to extend this. So we're going to take this line and we're just going to extend it. Just extending, not changing the shape, just connecting. Close this so I can see. Now, I can see this here and I don't like it, so I'm going to clean this up. And I would recommend that you do the same. So I just need to move this over because it's in my way. So I'm going to move this over here. And then I'm going to, so I moved it to connect it. And now I'm going to erase this guy here. So I just erase it to your liking. And I change it over to a circle. So that I can just get right in there. Okay, so just cleaning up until you don't see that deal poking out anymore. And I want too much, so just delete it. Sometimes you do need to zoom out just a little bit more. I know this seems fiddly, but again, the machine is so precise that you don't want it to have any lumps or bumps. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this again to get that guy out of the way. So now you can see that it did move it over. I just have to move that out of the way there just a little bit. Okay. And now if I zoom up, you can see that there's just a little bit. So now when you do point editing in Silhouette Studio, sometimes it does break up the compound path. Um, in this case, because we're going to do some more welding, it's okay. Um, but you want to make sure, see when you move this guy, it releases the compound path. So I want to make this a compound path that way I don't distort the shape so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can work with it here I'm going to duplicate it to the left and I'm going to mirror it to the left because I want I need to be able to weld these two together and I need to get rid of these middle lines. So all I'm doing is just clicking on the image that just duplicated over and I'm going to go ahead and increase the size so I can see it a little bit better. And I need to get rid of these middle lines here because I want to weld these two together. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to take my knife tool and I need to get closer up here so I can get exactly where I want to be. And because these are exactly at the same point, I can just go straight across and get rid of that. And now I need to go down and get rid of these two. And you can use the eraser on this, but I prefer to be a little bit more precise with the, so I click on that line and it's gone and I click on that line and it's gone. Now I do have a couple of little cleanup guys that I need to do down here because my knife didn't go as far down as I wanted it to. So I can just take my eraser and I can just clip that off. Take my eraser and just clip that part off and it's done. Okay, so I'm going to 
zoom out just a little bit. So now we have these separate pieces. And again, because we broke up the, the path, we need to make these a compound path again. And we need to make this side a compound path again. Now we're going to scoop this guy over. Just scoop with your arrow. And I do see up here that I need to clean this up just a little bit more too. So I'm going to go ahead and do this before I even weld this together because I don't want those because again your machine will cut this out and you don't want that so there's my eraser and just a tad more I'm being real persnickety here but it's gonna make a difference when your machine is cutting out the fabric so You don't want any jagged lines. It's just not a good look, even if it's in your seam allowance. This is the reason why we have a cutter, is so that we can have precise cuts. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out so I can see my whole pattern pieces here. And I'm going to continue moving this over. So I just click on one of the items. And I need to just touch it not overlap because again we don't want to change the shape i'm sorry change the size or the shape really and what we're going to do is we're going to make this i don't know if you can see this or not but i forgot to make this a compound path so if you look over here see how that broke again so i'm gonna have to edit undo until this gets back to where it needs to be because I erased those lumps and bumps it broke the path and so you see how it's I'm just editing undoing and you see how it's moving back again so I need to again make this compound path and make this side a compound path now I can move my guy over all in one piece. And again, we're just touching, not overlapping. And we need to move this over just a smidge. So that we're touching and not overlapping. So if you just play with it, it's worth it. There we go. So now that's even. Okay, and now we can make this a compound path. And we have our lining pleat piece done. So make a compound path. That makes it all one piece. Again, I'm going to change my size over to 12 by 12. And that fits pretty good. I like to have at least a half an inch on each side, even though my, my medium is 12 by 12 and my mat is 12 by 12. I just like to give myself a little bit of a leeway. So you can either take a chance at having a half inch or you can rotate that. Um, or you can change this over to um, your cutting mat to 12 by 24 if you have a 12 by 24 and you can cut your two of your linings. If you just have the 12 by 12 mat, no big deal you're just gonna only be able to cut one lining at a time. So because this is the lining and I need two of those, I'm gonna do duplicate below. And because this is touching, I don't want it to touch, I want it to overlap when it cuts out. And so I'm gonna zoom out so you can see that I have it on the 12 by 24 mat. 
and I have my medium as my fabric as 12 by 24 and I could probably fit one more but just for this sake of this tutorial I'm just going to leave it as two so now I'm going to do my file save as and I'm going to rename this lining and again I'm going to save this as SVG All right, so now I am going to do the next part of the pattern. So I'm going to open up my clematis pattern again. So we've done the slip pocket, we've done the lining, and now we need to do the exterior. I believe this is the last one. Yep, the exterior top and the exterior bottom. So again, more welding and more... Um, making compound paths, but we're going to just work with one of these pattern pieces at a time. So move this over so I can work with it. We're going to ungroup all of this. We're going to get rid of what we don't need here. All these words, the fold line, because we're going to weld this. Because our cutter is going to cut out the whole piece for us. So working with one piece at a time, we're going to make this a compound path. And we're just going to move that over there. We're going to make this a compound path. And I'm going to move this over here because I need some room to work. Okay, so I'm going to take this. This is the exterior top. And I'm going to mirror to the right. And I'm going to move this over. And again, we're going to take our knife tool. I'm going to make this really big so I can see it. I'm going to try and be a little bit more precise on this one because I don't want to have to do all that erasing. But if I have to, then I will, but we'll give it a shot here. So I take my knife tool, get up as close as possible, and bring that all the way across. And I think I did pretty good on that one. Let's see. Yeah, I did pretty good on that one. So I'm going to go down here, get rid of these going to line and see if I can get as close on that bottom one there. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to delete this middle line, delete this middle line. And again, remember, because we broke the path here, we have to go back and make these guys. See, see how that moves. It's me. We're going to do edit, undo to get that back where we wanted it. And we're going to make that side a compound path. And we're going to make the other side a compound path. And I missed, I knew I was going to do that too. I missed a part there. So I'm just undoing everything so that I can get back over and I'm glad this is happening because I can show you how to fix it because inevitably this is going to happen. It's just the way that the software works. So everything's highlighted now. We're going to make a compound path and we're going to move this guy over. And again, we're going to touch, not overlap, but we're just going to make sure. And then we're going to make everything a compound path. Again, I recommend that you increase the size here because I don't know if you can see this or not. This right here is going to cut out and you don't want that to cut out. So I need to bring this over. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to erase that little guy here. kind of being stubborn when it's up that far so so even though you can't see it there your cutter can see it so again let's move it down here to make sure that we are good to go and I still have a little bit of a hole there so I need to move this over so I'm gonna edit that And move it over okay so now we have oops, I zoomed out a little too far got a little click happy there <clears throat> okay so now I'm going to make sure that this is a compound path okay so this is the exterior top and I like to keep my pattern pieces because we're gonna have to cut two of these I like to keep my pattern pieces each one on a different tab per se so I'm gonna cut this and I'm going to make a new tab for it and this came in at 12 by 24 so I'm gonna paste that over here and again I'm gonna duplicate this to the bottom So now I have my exterior top. So I'm going to file save. And then this is going to be the blue Cala Clematis exterior top. I'll just put exterior top. And again, I'm going to save this as SVG on my desktop and click OK. And now I'm going to go back now I'm going to go back to my exterior bottom and I'm going to do the same thing so I've got to duplicate this mirror to the right okay and I'm going to move this over just a little bit I'm going to take my knife tool close that guy out I'm going to increase the size so I can really, really see it. And I'm going to take my knife tool. And again, I hold down the shift key and make my straight line across like that. And now I'm going to go down to the bottom. Cut this middle line out and remove these middle lines. So just click on them, highlight them, delete. Now, again, I know I keep reiterating, repeating myself, but it's very important that you take these just one side at a time and you make them a compound path again. And because if you forget it and you're dragging it along and moving it here and there, your machine, your software doesn't know that it was supposed to be attached. And then it won't get cut out. Now, we are going to, again, clean this up. And as you can see, the pleats on these are not connected. So we need to connect these guys. So again, we're going to do some point editing and we're going to just drag those down just a tad so that they connect. Make it bigger so you can see it. The more precise you are, the more precise your machine is going to cut. 
and the less fabric you're going to waste because if this doesn't cut properly you're going to have to do it again okay, so i need to connect these points i don't want to resize it so i need to undo that because that resized it but you can see now that's connected So that's connected, that's connected. I have not made this a compound path yet, so you can still see that that is not connected, but I need to go over here and I need to do the same thing. So I'm gonna edit this point here and I'm gonna connect that guy. And I'm gonna connect this guy here okay so now that's connected just go up a little bit make sure that these corners are connected as well before I make this yep that looks good so now I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to make this I need to move this over I'm going to zoom out so I can highlight everything and I need to move this over first and again we're not overlapping we are just touching so I'm gonna make sure that these are connected I don't see any white space there I'm gonna make a compound path and now my exterior bottom is done so i'm going to change this back over to 12 by 24 close this page setup and move this over and again you can have it so that your grid is um, showing so that you can see where your fabric is lining up. I like to have it at the half inch mark on either side. This is a little bit longer. So use your judgment on this one. I probably will rotate it. So rotate it so that I can have more wiggle room. And since we need two of these, I'm going to go ahead and replicate that to the right and those ones don't touch so we are good to go and I'm going to save this change the name to exterior bottom save it as a SVG and click on OK now, in order to make a, I guess, a um, catalog in your um, library, you can save as, save to library, and I need to sign it in here. So save as a library, and you can see I already have some in here, so I have one time made. Um, you can do a new folder, new folder, and you can name it Blue Cala. Click on OK. And then as you, so we'll go into there, close that, um, and you'll see your blue cala. Now you can do a subcategory and do a new folder in the blue cala folder, and you can click on, you can name this Clematis. Because if you want to go ahead and import more of blue cala patterns, you can have that sub 
category. So now you can go to save to library and you can click on your clematis and click on OK. And then you will just need to do that for all of your different parts of your pattern. And so we'll have this save as, save to library. Sorry, I keep on needing to sign in here. Click on clematis. And, you know, at this point, you would probably rename it, but then you can just click on OK and then your lining will be in there so now when you go in there and you want to open from your library go to your library and you can say okay i want to go ahead and cut out some uh, blue cala clematises and i'll just go down to my user designs here okay i already have my clematis here and then i can open all of these so I hope that is helpful and go back to our design here. If you have any questions, please let us know. Again, I would like to thank Kelly, my friend, Song of Kelly, for allowing me to do this tutorial for the Silhouette Studio, uh, for those of us that have the portrait and the cameo, and also to Celine from Blue Cala for allowing us to do this tutorial with her free pattern called the Clematis. Hope you all have a great day.